Banalist, nuke, initiate, launch codes, activate, destroy, Yu-Gi-Oh! <sighs> The game was more skillful where you had to manage your resources better. You had to keep some in reserve because at the end of the day, you couldn't just combine some, oh, let's just squeeze these guys into an Appaloosa for three mats. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Band list season is here. All the ladies want to cheer for Flam Birch to get banned. Oh no, they just get ran through. <sighs> just my uh, little bit of rapping right there. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's just get real into this right away, right now, right, right now, yeah. right now, right here, right here, right now, right here. We are back to dueling. Wave bye bye to the beard. Obligatory ban list video coming in hot it was demanded by the konami ran secret shadow government of collectible card games we could not prevent this every youtuber does this like clockwork the two and a half month mark since the last ban list it has to be done or else what are we doing here why make a concise cool video about something thought-provoking or uh, analytical let's just do all reliable i suppose this is where i would say hey guys snake eyes cards are really strong they're making the format really not fun and I really don't want to play. And uh, yeah, I really haven't been playing this format in terms of live, in paper, in person card play. I went to Columbus Regionals a few, like a month ago, and uh, I just haven't been going since. I have a kid and a wife and all sorts of stuff. I want to do this YouTube thing. And the last thing I want to do is go sit across some dude that if I don't draw three hand traps, I just lose. Like, ah, eh. or pay a thousand dollars for a game where I can like possibly win three OTS. Like, I, it just it doesn't make sense. It doesn't it doesn't make sense to pay $1,000 to win three OTS packs a week. I, I, I don't get it. Snake eyes are retarded, and we know this. They're an unfun slot. News flash. Water is wet. Maybe that's what they mean by uh, next year, year of water. But I've already addressed a lot of these concerns about snake eyes in my previous video. The going second sucks ass in Yu-Gi-Oh! video. You can click it up top. If you'd like to see that and you haven't seen it yet. If you haven't seen it yet, you're living under a rock. We all know Flamberge needs banned probably something else maybe even an ash band or an oak band or something something that deck has to be hit hard right because the deck is still it's two decks technically you hit one the other one could still live and maybe just take up that vacuum but ultimately we know they're not going to do anything right so ultimately these banlist predictions are kind of a waste right it's they're useless we predict and then it's almost like they see the predictions and on purpose make it as stupid and incorrect as possible Have you ever changed an aspect of your story based on fan feedback i.e. if one of their theories is better than what you originally planned. <laughs> right, like the Charvara to one hit. Absolute asinine. I'm not saying Unchain shouldn't have been hit, I'm just saying that is the wrong hit, my friend. Like hit Poplar, ban Poplar. It's, this, it's almost the equivalent. But I'll tell you what is not a waste of my breath and a waste of our time. I proposed a murder list in the previous video, and I believe my last base cringe. And a murder list shall I deliver today! Ban list, nuke, initiate, launch codes, activate, destroy Yu-Gi-Oh! <sighs> What does it take to fix Konami's mess? I'll tell you. 48 banned cards. <laughs> 19 limited cards. Not as bad as 48 banned, right? But four semi-limits. Had to do some semi-limits. I know you guys love them. And 13 cards brought back to three from some other number from three. That, that, uh, from another number that isn't three. Now, this is a freaking list. And at least this is more enjoyable than your standard ban oak. Hold on, hold on. I need my glass. Like you've seen. Ban oak. <laughs> Banning Oak, that makes it 3% more susceptible to Nibiru. So, uh, we'll just ban... Oh, sorry. Banning Oak is the correct thing. Also, banning Albion is the correct thing. Uh, a deck that is maybe 3% of the meta, even if it is degenerate. Puppet shouldn't exist. I agree, 100%. Ban Albion. Ban Oak. Ban Oak. What are we talking about? What are we freaking talking about here? Let's go through this list. Our goal was to make the game as interactable, back and forth, as possible. Which meant limiting the amount of power decks have going first. That doesn't mean limit, um, mon limit special summons to some arbitrary number, limit this or that. No, it means you can have special summons. That special summons aren't inherently a problem with the game as long as the special summons don't lead to seven negates, eight negates, five to four negates is tough, right? So 
Uh, we wanted to address that. We wanted to address massive interrupts. We wanted to address lockouts and we wanted to address OTKs, right? We don't want access code OTK in every deck that can shit out a link deck, right? So let's go through the list. Here we are with the goo. I hope you guys enjoy. So to explain it, this is legit a entire ban list. I took my time. We took our time, me and my group. We took our time to make this ban list as good as we possibly can to make the game actually fun as opposed to the insane, stupid slog where one of my buddies, Andre, shout out to him. You'll see uh, you guys, depending on when this video goes up, you might have already seen him in uh, my Yu-Gi-Oh! Eras Cup. The Yu-Gi-Oh! at some points, especially during tier zero formats, is literally Stockholm Syndrome. It's not fun, yet we still play. It's only fun to the competitive like weirdos that will pay $1,000, then pay another $1,000 for tickets to fly out somewhere, uh, round trip, plus another couple hundred bucks for hotel. Plus, bro, how do you make this? How, I don't understand. Like, how do you make money off of this? Does this make sense? Like, you're not, okay, maybe you're not making money off of this, but like, how does it make economic sense, dude? Like, you love this game that much? Bro, come on, man. Go have a wife, grab kids. I'm sorry. This is crazy. You should waste your money. Let's get into this, right? First ban. So all of them... FK, I'll let you guys figure out what FK stands for. It is definitely an acronym. Just think about it. If you guys do uh, understand what FK stands for, if you figure it out, write it down in the comments below. First ban was we had to get rid of all special summon stoppers, right? I don't want some bullcrap. And the reason we hit all these, oh, why are you hitting Christia? Why are you hitting barrier statues, bro? They don't do anything, bro. They don't do, 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 do. We hit these cards because once you hit certain stuff and then you hit the stuff below that and you hit the stuff below that, you're going to have to deal with stun and other stupid stuff. So you got to hit even that stuff, right? And ultimately, um, why would we want special summon stoppers to be in the game at all? Like plopping down a fossil dyna and set and card of demising and setting up five back row, like that that doesn't prove you're the better player. It just proves that like you can normal summon a monster. Like th this is literally the not even caveman Yu-Gi-Oh. Like caveman Yu-Gi-Oh is like war rock. Literally, that doesn't prove nothing. Anyway, all of those Archlord Christia banned. Barrier statues all banned. Joining Stormwinds. That makes sense because you don't want, even if the dark and light ones, sometimes there could be formats, you just don't want it to happen. I saw that Fire King, Snake Eyes Fire King, can legit pop out Barrier Statue of the Inferno. The only reason they're not running it is because it's a fire format. If there were other decks besides fire that were viable, they would be running Barrier Statue of Inferno. All you have to do is do that uh, baby Kieran, send it to the graveyard, and then bring it back with um, Sunlight Wolf or what other card. There's a way for them to easily make it. So all Barrier Statues should be banned. They're just retarded cards. They don't deserve to exist. Uh, to piggyback off of that, uh, Dimension Shifter and Droll. Oh, sorry, no, that's a Jin. Droll right here. Dimension Shifter and Droll, banned. Those cards don't need to exist, right? They only exist to stop degenerate ass crap from going off. Well, why don't we just get rid of the degenerate crap and then we don't have to worry about Droll, right? Droll is inherently just like a, like, if you go first, set up board, and then uh, you drew Droll on your opponent, it's like a maxi situation. You drop Droll and your opponent can't play, you automatically win. It's just like the stupidest thing I've ever seen. DDD Vice King Requiem, banned. You will see that'll be explained as we go further in the list. So don't be confused why we hit a freaking DDD Pendulum that DDDs don't even run. Fossil Dyn Apache Cephalo, another special summon stopper, doesn't need to exist in the game. Absolutely stupid. Jaugen the Spiritualist, banned, especially now, right? But there's so many ways. This card was a game breaking of spellbooks back in the day. These kind of cards do not need to exist. No one cares for these cards. Let, let get them out of here. Math makes <laughs> Uh, Majesty's Fiend, banned. It's another, like, I summon this dude, you can't play. I, I, these, these, he's probably the most reasonable because it's, it just locks out monster effects, right? You can still special summon, but like, no, it's, it's enough of that. Uh, we made another tweak to a few, some decks reconfigured, right? Some hits that were stupid were like removed and kind of fixed up. And, uh, so some other cards were hit to, uh, adjust for those decks. We'll get into that more and more, but Neospatian Aqua Dolphins banned. Uh, sorry to all the GX players who play Neospatians. Uh, all three of you, like, I truly apologize from the bottom of my heart. Snake Eyes Ash, Snake Eyes Flamber Dragon, banned. Both of them get fire out of here, right? You want to use it as an engine to get out Ponix? Sure, go ahead. Ash, Flamber, gone. You don't get your infinite modern day master plan, uh, infinite uh, advantage engine, F that. Silva, right? Oh, why Silva? Because now you can't hand loop, right? We, we remove Droll from the game. Droll is the only thing that truly hits Dark Worlds. They can play through like Abyss Steel or any other hand trap pretty easily. Going second, they might struggle a little bit. Going first, that deck can FD KU like nothing. So Silva's gone. Now the deck basically is resorting to some infusion, maybe summon a rank eight, maybe two rank eights. At the end of the day, it's three interrupts. It's not that big a deal. And their discards, they don't get a cheap, like you don't get um, activate a normal spell card that gets, that effect gets changed 
and and you lose two more cards from your hand. I just no, no, thank you. Um, and you think, oh wait, why don't you set your hand? Okay, sure, you set your hand, but they also have gold in hand. And then gold just pops your stuff. But gold is inherently more fair. Silva is not. Silva is gone. Substitute. We uh, banned substitute and released Ronin Toten. We'll get to that later, but that's basically just all. Some of these are just adjustments, like trade this for that, uh, because for real, no one cares about substitute. Ronin Toten is a cool card. Uh, let Paleos exist. Let Frogs exist. Those are those are cool cards. They should not be banned. Vanity's Fiend, Vanity's Ruler, bye bye. No one wants you in the game. Albion the Sanctifier Dragon. We took an L here, guys. We had to. But once we hit everything, you have to hit Albion. Yes, we could do the gimmick puppet. We could do Ido. Eventually, if people want to, you can just do Jaugen. You can just do Jaugen, right? We ban Jaugen. Okay. If we hit Gimmick Puppet, we hit Ido, we hit um, Orthos. We, there's so many cards you can hit. At this point, let's just ban Albion. He's not that key to the strategy. Without Gimmick Puppet, a lot of people don't even want to run him. He's really just nice because then you, you can kind of avoid evenly matched and other cards. Like, you can stop Kashtira really well because you plop a monster on their field and they can't play, which is really nice. But, you know. We lose, we lose Albion. We still got our whole deck. We're still mirror jading. We're still Baron Infusioning. We're still feeling good. Maybe, right? We didn't get to the rest of the list. But uh, El Shadal Winda, another card that says you cannot play, right? Once you hit stuff, IDS could come back. Uh, the Shadal part of that, yes, unfortunately, got, it gets touched. But we remove that no fun card from the game. Like, so you don't have to worry about, oh man, he has he has Schism set and he has a Mecha Bond. He, like, these, these are tough things to play through. Like, this isn't a you got outskilled. This is a you just didn't draw it. And that's what we're trying to remove from the game. Remove the, you just didn't draw the card, right? Here we go. A little spoiler. Three, four cards. <laughs> Access Code Talker, right? Stupid OTK card uh, and Boral Sword. Both stupid OTK cards that only exist because the game is so stupid at this point uh, where the decks that go first... They use, they use up all their resources to make the stupid board. When you break through that board, you use all your resources to make one of these two douchebags. Then you crack their whole board and just kill them now because if we let them survive one more turn, their resource loop just gets them snowballing and it's over. Stupid. So once we remove from the game a lot of these going first cards and these special summon stoppers, whatever, these going second OTK cards need to be removed from the game. So first of all, we removed a lot of those. Access code, Boral Sword are gone. Appaloosa, degenerate, stupid card. Yes, guys, I know there's outs. There's outs to all of these cards. The problem is these cards demand an out. It's not like a, I have my hand and I can try to play through it with engine. No, it's a, I have my hand. Did I draw? Oh, but Book of Eclipse will out the special summon summoners wave. Like, why are you hating on that? That's such a stupid hit. Yes, of course. Oh, but Ghost Ogre. Are you running Ghost Ogre? Oh, but, but Chalice, but if you draw your Imperm. Sure, bro. But Appaloosa is backed up by another two negates that are Omnis. <laughs> if you got Bar Boral, uh... Not Boral, uh, Barone the Floor. Yeah, Boral, Boral Load Savage, too. You have Barone or Boral Load Savage backing up uh, Appaloosa. Like, what are we talking about? Appaloosa isn't susceptible to Ghost Ogre. It isn't susceptible to, to Forbidden Challenge. And even when Appaloosa is alone, one monster, just because you spammed out, a lot of decks can spam, just because you spammed out doesn't mean you get the reward. Back in the day, before Lynx, you didn't get a reward of, man, I have all these monsters from my field, now I just consolidate them into a monster, like a like an amazing card. No. Back in the day... And by back in the day, I mean just pre-Link. The game was more skillful where you had to manage your resources better. You had to keep some in reserve because at the end of the day, you couldn't just combine some, oh, let's just squeeze these guys into an Appaloosa for three mats. <laughs> retarded. This is retarded. Crush Heap. Maybe controversial. Controversial. All this card ever does is, here's an extra body to Link spam more. Right? Like, maybe it's an overkill because we've hit a lot of those cards that it leads into, but... Overall, Cross Sheep's never been used for something just fair. It's used for some stupid Wombo Combo deck. Wombo Combo potential. It doesn't need to exist. Thank you, Cross Sheep. Uh, I uh, hardly knew ya. So, now we get IP Mascarena. Another card. Absolutely, completely degenerate. Uh, quick linking. That's, that's the, that's just, we're making one of the degenerate... Uh, like, link, link Summoning is one of the most degenerate things ever devised. It's just plop two... Three monsters, effect monsters for IP. It's non-links, bro. Oh my god, make it make sense. No need for that in the game. Get out of here. SP Little Knight. This card's stupid. Like, come on. Magician of Black Chaos Max. Now we're hitting we're hitting a lot of the top stuff. So now we need to address a lot of other uh other stuff. Even if like Drytron isn't that um popular at the moment, uh Magician of Black Chaos Max is just an absolutely belligerent card that doesn't need to exist. What are we talking about? Oh, but uh if I summon this card and I lock you out of the lock me out of 
activating monster effects. And you, it's not even like, a, oh man, you can only do it once. No, you could, you could loop it. So it's like, what are we talking about? Uh, another probably more important one there is Burrow on the Floor. Banned. Get that card out of here. It makes all of the level 10s obsolete. When was the last time you ran another level 10 except Bestial Dispatter so that you can loop him back on the field? Sword Soul Chengying is an absolute god card and people are like, that card's trash. It's not Barone. Hot Red Dragon, uh, Archfiend King Calamity. Card locks you out from playing. The, no skill. The, the, the whole point of my ban list here, our ban list, is no skill. Take out no skill out of the game. Nat Beast. Yes, I know it's specific to certain decks, it's not really prevalent, but that, that card in certain decks, there's going to be a deck that can abuse it in the future. There's always something Earth, Tuner, Synchro comes out. Nat Beast is just free, belligerent stupidness. And I know Dark Ruler exists, another card exists. I know there's outs. There's outs to all of these cards, but there's no card that's a silver bullet for all of them. That you can be like comfortably be like, yeah, I'm going second, and I know I'll be able to play. Fat chance. Uh, Nat Beast can invalidate your whole entire hand. It's almost like Eradicator Epidemic Virus if you're running more uh, spells in your deck. Like, come on, we don't need that in the game. Banned. Psychic and Punisher, another just absolute stupid card going second. I burn myself. I, I pay all my life points in Punk, and then I have 17,000 attack, and I kill you. It's just a stupid belligerent card. Uh, Abyss Dweller, a card that literally has no answer except maybe like droplets. Like, how do you answer Dweller? Please explain to me. Uh, when your opponent makes it, they always make it as like a piece of their board. It's not by itself that it's this oppressive, crazy thing, but it is pretty oppressive. Your opponent goes, they make Dweller, you go, and then you're like, huh, if I activate Impern, they chain. Because it's not a to main phase allocation. It's just, it's an old card. Doesn't They don't care about, back in the day when they didn't even care about hard ones per turn. So Abyss Dweller just says, I can chain at any time, even in the draw phase, right? So you can't Imperm it. The moment you activate a card, you're like, oh man, well maybe I'll chain Imperm to it. You have to have, I don't even know what you would have to have, maybe a imper, Imperm Chalice. You need two cards to answer one, two, like one, two level four XYZ monster. Get out of here with that. No chance. Uh, Abyss Dweller Band. Disgusting card. Shouldn't exist. And Scars from Tier format. Didn't even play that much in that format. But just the fact that one person could make a Dweller and then just kill the other person. Where that deck was made to interact on both people's turns. On turn zero for both players to play. Absolutely ridiculous. Get that out of here. Gigantic Sprite. A card that is way too generic and allows uh, sprites to just go, hey, we're going into other stuff. Genericness had to be cut out because we don't want just... This deck has a bunch of negates, has a bunch of random stuff that could just randomly go off. It's almost at full power other than elf. Sprite, we don't want that deck to go off too much, especially as some runic fur hire sprite thing. Bye-bye, uh, Gigantic. We delete the bridge from those decks. Raid Raptor, Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon. I know this deck isn't topping much at the moment. It's getting some tops. It's actually somewhat successful. The problem is, this card says you cannot play. Your opponent will go do your thing. It's a card that invalidates Nibiru. Nibiru should not be getting invalidated, right? Nibiru is a horribly punishing card, but every, every almost every deck can be built in a certain way to uh, uh, adjust for Nibiru, right? Uh, maybe running more trap cards. Uh, I know it sucks for the combo players to hear that. Oh, well, I gotta run trap. I gotta run a whole third of the game, bro. Why do I have to run a whole third of the game? Raid Raptor Ult Ultimate Falcon just says, we're playing. I'm gonna make Arsenal. Arsenal floats into this. Activate this effect. After that, you cannot activate anything. Like, that, that's ridiculous. Play your deck. Make your towers. But you can't let me not interact with you, right? So when you activate your quick play, to, re to summon and this is coming from a guy who actually plays raid raptors on the side it's one of my decks that i picked up for this format uh that quick play being interrupted by a hand trap possibly a crow bestial whatever is their chance to play like if you get him out you win you have exodia but if not like this card just prevents that so we had to hit raid raptors in some way it's just everything's getting hit so then we have to hit that too angelica's angelic ring uh this card is just the worst thing about Yu-Gi-Oh. we made dark ruler right we made uh, Forbidden Droplets. We made these cards to play against these combo decks, and then we just make cards that invalidate those cards. Like, we didn't make those cards so that we could take another step back to 2020 at Emancipator format, where, like, your opponent would just make, like, everything you came to play. Right? Like, Angelica's Ring, bye-bye. I know, I know, Infernoble isn't the best deck in the game, but hey, we hit Neospatian Aqua Dolphin. That might mean we let something else come back, so keep watching. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Divine Sword Phoenix Blade, oh, another hit on Infernoble. What is he doing? What is he doing? Well, just keep watching. It all makes sense, guys. 
keep watching this whole, you have to see the whole list in its totality for it to make sense. Super Poly, Terraforming, Phantom Knights Rank Up Magic Launch, all banned. Super Poly, it's a going second card, but ultimately, the fact that a Garura and a Mud Dragon exist, just being able to suck up, I know that it doesn't affect Snake Eyes, but there are formats that Super Poly is just absolutely belligerent. Once you hit these decks, things get more evenly power leveled. Uh, Super Poly becomes just too broken, and the fact that you cannot respond with anything is kind of insane. So, uh, like not even an in-theme card, like maybe like a reframing, right, can, can answer. Not that I'm advocating for Manadium to have an answer to Super Poly. That deck is just AIDS. But I'm just saying, Super Poly, once we've hit a lot of these going first cards, Super Poly kind of loses its usefulness. Not, not usefulness, but it loses its purpose, right? If you don't have crazy, insane boards to go against, you don't need Super Poly. So we'll just ban it anyway because the card is a little too overtuned. Terraforming, just a little hit on consistency with all these other decks. There are other engines to get into field spells, like the uh, Foolish Burial Goods engine with the with the Rainbow Bridge from Crystal Beast, where you can search also a Crystal Beast. Yes, it's a you get a brick, but hey, that's that's what it is. Like uh, you want to run more field spells than run that. You know, terraforming is just a clear like it's almost like an upstart, right? But even better because you get a field spell, which a deck that runs terraforming is gonna love. When they, a deck that runs terraforming, when they see terraforming, like. <laughs> what are we talking about dog and then phantom knight rank up magic launch had to be hit for just random like kali yuga plays and all that. that this stuff is aids uh it was hit before for as a thought there's always some random card that was designed to be summoned going second to invalidate your opponent's board so then maybe you could like establish yours hit them whatever like as a thought and kali yuga were and for some reason konami prints these generic phantom knights rank up magic launch type cards where it's like bro we just we, those cards were meant to go second and now you're using it to make your board and on top of that change one dude into another dude and uh, make us not be able to play stupid get that out of the game now we're gonna get i think everyone's gonna agree with this anti-spell banned dimensional barrier banned i don't think i have to explain these if i have to explain these to you guys i mean you might be a slow boy you know not coming anyone but come on like uh ghost meets girl masterful makashi blah 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 turn skip card because of uh transaction rollback banned goes in match banned Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. Banned. Card is, these are all belligerent. Who wants these in the game? Eradicate your Epidemic Fires. Banned. Rivalry. Banned. Skill Drain. Banned. Summon Limit. Banned. There can be only one. Banned. Guys, this is what we've dreamed of. Left Arm of the Forbidden One. Now we get to some comebacks, right? Well, at least one. Block Dragon. When you hit so many of these extra deck monsters, Block Dragon becomes fine. At the end of the day, it doesn't really do much. It's a resource loop for Adam Emancipator. Adam Emancipator will make like Two, three interrupts. It's not really anything too much. Uh, we'll just we, we're 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 testing it out, uh, almost as a favorite one of our friends uh, in the group who really just wanted to test this and see how it worked. And so we brought it back. But generally, once you hit Apo, you hit some of these different belligerent cards. Union Hanger is still banned. Block Dragon, I think, is fine at one. Uh, then we have the other Bestials to join Magnumut. Druid Swarm, Sarnia, and Baldrake. The uh, actual effect of it ban banishing is just so powerful that it just slaughters dark and light decks that it's probably, with three DD Crows, it's just too much to exist in the game. And even though Magnumut has the best effect, Druid has an insane effect. Sarnia in some decks is crazy. Uh, Baldrake is the worst one, but they're all... Their first effect is, I banish a resource from your graveyard, which we know in today's game is, like, huge. And I summon an Elemental Hero Neos. 25 by 2,000 stats is crazy. The amount of pressure it applies. Two bestials, you're over half your life points. Like that's that's too much, too much. And that's uh, one of the. We were actually thinking about possibly Magnum would being banned, but for, for now we thought it was fine, so um, we we left it at one. Fairy tale snow. Well, you know, let's just try it out. Let's just try it out. There's a lot of these uh, extra deck cards have been hit, banned whatso uh, whatsoever. So like, fairy tale snow coming back is not the end of the world. Um, it's a nice little testing ground. We've taken away so much. Let's put something back. And at one, I mean, how often are you going to see it? You might make decks that can um, push out Fairytale Snow, but at the end of the day, it's a quick effect. Banish seven cards uh, to special itself back in a Book of Moon. Like, so many decks can deal with that. I'm, I'm not I'm not too worried. Uh, we brought back Kieran. I think Konami's going to do this. This is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we brought Masterpiece, the True Draco Slaying King, back to one. Uh, guys, it's like about time this card came back. This is... Uh, like it's crazy that this card is is still banned like we have noir we have uh raid raptor being with something like three towers masterpieces is, is banned i know i've talked about this in pretty much every video i've ever made but masterpiece should be back 
uh, at least just a one, right? Just a one. And then we'll see where it goes. Spiral master plan. Guys, I know this is crazy. Oh man, it's a good combo deck combo. Master plan is fine at one because when you look at it, it's an advantage engine for a deck that already can just like make, you know, advantage. But at the end of the day, what does it make? Once you get rid of its Appaloosa, uh, Goblins ban, so many cards are hit. Like, I just don't know. I don't see what it actually can make. So master plan. This one is a little bit tenuous. It was like snow. Like, do we bring it back? Do we not? We thought, hey, we're taking away so much. Let's put some stuff back because it's fun to test like that, right? So we're going to use this actually as like a messing around, like second format we play uh, to, to test uh, some of these cards. We brought back Thunder Dragon Colossus. This was probably the most um, complicated uh, bring back. Thunder Dragon has absolutely been like not seen. It's like True Draco. It's been completely MIA. And uh, at the moment, the way the current game is set up, yes, they're searching, but a lot of decks, like if you look at it, um, the, re the same reason Droll isn't effective is uh, one of the reasons that Colossus has lost some of his luster. Like there really isn't, they're searching, but a lot of decks can just get away with not searching, right? They can foolish cards and then put them back. A lot of cards will place cards face up from the deck like that. So Thunder Dragon Colossus has probably been somewhat power creeped. Uh, so we thought bring it back to one, see if Thunder Dragon can compete whatsoever. If they can, you know, cool. If, if it is too powerful, we'll put it back. But overall, we just wanted to test some cards out again. We brought back Curious Alight Sworn Dominion. This might be a little bit contentious also, but overall, I think Konami will do this too. I think with tier limits being hit I, I, this card was fine for like years and years and years and years and uh, tier limits are gone i don't understand why this card would, would still be hit uh emperor charles the great this one is a little contentious but i told you guys stick with me a lot of these hits like they make sense as a together thing uh so we banned aqua dolphin we banned some of those equips like angelica's ring and divine sword phoenix bay we hit Emperor Charles the Great for what? So that we could bring back a soul to Tales of the Noble Knights. What we want for uh, Infernobles, they're a great deck that can generate a lot of advantage going first, make negates. They can make, you know, pretty consistently, they can make three negates with the uh, Phoenix Gear Freed, uh, two Charles. Uh, they can maybe make an SP and even a Barone sometimes. They can make a lot going first and a lot of, a lot of decks that... Uh, tech in the flame swords and stuff they can go second very easily this was a hit on their going first plays where they can't make multiple charles um and then gain the consistency in, with his sold and be able to go second a little bit more with just engine and pure and with no dolphin is sold i think is fine especially with no phoenix blade or angelica's ring i think it's all fine so also it's just a test i think his sold might have been unfairly hit but you know maybe it was fairly hit this is what this was made this this list we made just so we could see what the heck we could do we're like we can take away some of the stupid generic stuff and let some of the archetypes actually have a chance. Because at the end of the day, if we look at it, uh, Noble Knights were doing degenerate stuff, but they were hit too harshly too fast. They, they should have gotten a chance a little bit more under the sun. Uh, Dolphin, who cares about Dolphin? Who cares about GX? Like, I love GX, but who cares about one Neospatial Aqua Dolphin? No one plays that except for degenerate stuff. Get that out of the game. We brought one prank kids meow moo back. Meow meow moo. Um, I sound like a, I sound like retarded. Like, meow meow moo. Like we brought that back because it makes uh, it makes sense. Prank kids absolutely slaughtered. Kind of like thunder dragons. Kind of like Dracos. Let's give them a chance, right? Let's just see what they can do. If they're too powerful, we take him out behind the shed and hit him again. <sighs> All right. So we hit Zeus to one. The contention was do we ban zeus entirely because with so many cards going first being hit um zeus like maybe zeus should have been banned but um we thought we'd give it a chance just at one i know a lot of decks just run one but you'll see why we actually had to to limit it to one for something else at the end of the day it's not like a boral sword or a uh, access code where when you do the zeus play like everything's gone so uh, overall, like Zeus doesn't facilitate an OTK. It just facilitates facilitates board breaking, which is fine. Next one, MX Saber uh, Invoker. Uh, this card's fine to come back. Probably to three, but we put it to one just to be safe, just to try it out. Uh, Raid Raptor Rising Rebellion Falcon. We wanted to take away the ability of making one, doing another search, right? Because you use the one, the first one to do a search, blah, 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 and then set up the, the quick play for next turn to make a second one so you can nuke your opponent and then have three towers. Well, we took away the towers that stopped your opponent from playing and we took away one of the, uh, two of the towers. Like, so you, you lose your second, you lose two, two of your three towers, so you get one and you can I, I still make another towers. There's, they still have like that, 
rank 12 that you can float into from Arsenal Falcon. It just doesn't have a block out negate effect, right? So guys, at the end of the day, it was make the game more fair going first and second. And that's what we try to do here. Zodiac Broadbull. I think this might kind of foreshadow what's coming further, but yeah, this is uh, maybe a little bit, you know, risky, but if you look at it in Master Duel, it's back, and there's no, I don't think Broad Bull is. I think Dryden is to three in a couple of the cards, but overall, uh, I think this is fine. I, I think Zodiac Broad Bull is completely okay. Boom. Grass looks greener. 2-1. Don't question it. It's, it's fine. Uh, I think 60-card decks... Um, they're they're somewhat popular now especially with like branded and stuff but overall if you want to run infernoids if you want to run that go ahead you know if you want a left arm offering if you want to thrust into it i think that's fine too i think that's pretty fair right because that means your opponent you're going second into a board with grass i think grass giving you that advantage going second is fair uh i think going first uh one ash just kills your left arm offering one ash will kill your grass so uh in my opinion i think that uh grass is fine at one and we all agreed so uh, another floodgate we hit was uh, monarchs erupt once you hit all these other floodgates they're still like monarchs erupt for like draco we bring it back masterpiece that's another reason we felt comfortable bringing back masterpiece we were like he probably deserves to be back anyway but with all these floodgates hit why wouldn't we bring masterpiece back uh draco is actually a skillful deck if there is no floodgates so now we get to the semi-limits we brought back unchained soul of sharvara so the reason we hit requiem king is uh, Soul of Sharvara was a consistency hit and a hit to uh, the actual end board because you couldn't float, in, you couldn't have a Sharvara under the guy, under Caesar, and have it in your hand. This allows you to have that setup at the cost of a lot of consistency and a lot of different utility. Uh, you lose gates, the three gates, you lose your time win condition, you lose uh, Machinex, which is a broken card, lets you go first and second very easily without a normal summon lets you make Zeus. It's so broken that losing that just for one Sharvara, it's probably unchained here in this format, might actually be worse than the normal format, but you get a second Sharvara to play with, so it's pretty sweet, pretty fun. Give it a try. We brought back Zodiac Rat Ratpier just so he could actually perform his effect because he literally can't use his effect, that one to special summon another rat from deck. Rats should swarm, we all know this. We brought back Ma Monster Gate to two, just to bump it up by one, give it a try, see what happens. Uh, we brought back reasoning to one or to two from one, right? We brought both of those back. Uh, let some of these mill decks have a chance with monster gate and reasoning. You can't really run hand traps, right? Because uh, you don't want to hit on those and then summon a hand trap because that doesn't further your game state. So they actually get hard countered. Like if you're going second with a mill deck, you should get a lot of advantage through that because otherwise you literally can't play. Your opponent will still snowball a lot going first, have a lot of resources, a lot of interrupts, a lot of different stuff. And, uh, this gives them a chance to fight. And then finally, the cards that we unlimited completely, you got Blaster, back to three. I think all of these, all of the Dragon Rulers are back in Master Duel and they don't do anything. Uh, we brought Panker Tops back to three. He should have been brought back last list. I don't understand what they're doing. Glow Up Bulb, back to three. I don't understand why it was forbidden. Uh, Lunalite Tiger uh, might be tripping, but brought back to three. Gamma, we put that back to give another chance going second. And some... Um, counter going first where if your opponent were to negate you uh with whatever uh, like whatever hand trap but as long as you don't have a monster you can still gamma and that does blow them out yes but it's a it's a trade-off right a lot of decks mostly just use gamma going second very few decks can actually use it going first so those decks that can use it going first i don't think they're very good at all so if they if they if they if it happens it happens i mean redox uh we brought all the dragon rulers back like we'll just we'll go through the whole list right here we brought back uh redox tempest and title to three let's see what dragon rulers can do they're full power they have the babies they have everything guys let's get to it let's make a list uh ronin toten as i already said speedroid terror top just cleaning up some of the uh to two list because we put some cards there so let's move some cards uh we put dryden back to three it's in master duel at three no problem we put diagram back to three uh some consistency for draco they lose all their floodgates but they get consistency i think that's pretty fair dinos get some consistency uh, i think that's uh, if they still run diagram i'm not sure uh we brought engage back to three that should have been back at three and zodiac barrage to three so guys what do you think we went a little bit ham for sure just let me know in the comments below what do you like what do you not like do you agree with uh, our, our choices? Do you agree with doing something like this? Or do you like where the game is at? I mean, you're wrong, but I'll still listen. You know what I mean? I comment. I, I reply to everybody. You know, man of the people, as I say. It took a lot of effort. A lot of effort to make this list, to go through 
pretty much every, like what we think is a problem in the game today. And uh, I think we genuinely were able to hit some of those key key things and make the game more balanced. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That being said, for anyone that stayed this far, I really appreciate you guys. True G's. I have a challenge. Look through this list, build decks, build the gooeyest goo that you could goo up. Try to break the break this format. Prove me wrong. Prove me that the game is still broken in this state. And send me replays and deck lists to the email listed below in the description. The best decks and replays that I get, bar, uh, uh, assuming that I get enough of them, will be uh, featured in a future video. And that's not all. If there's enough interest and people really loved what we did here, I want to make a community slash subscriber tournament in the near future under using this list that I just said. And I'll pin this list in the description below and prove to me that we genuinely did fix this game or did we make it just five times worse? Or we just merely move the goalpost and it's a lateral move and need to adjust further. Thank you guys again, and as always, see ya!